Hey everyone, Christy Rice here, author of Painterly Days. I am here though to introduce you to Christy's Cutting Garden, which I have the book open right now. Uh, the books are the same exact structure as Painterly Days. The front cover flaps open, but you'll start to notice that from book to book, all of the uh, tutorial content inside is completely different, which I'm really excited about. So we'll get into that a little bit more, um, but the same structure, beautiful cover with the foil printing, um, folds in and out. You can use it to protect the pages that you're working on. Uh, really excited about the new size, which is eight by 10. Uh, this is the summer edition the back same again if you have painterly days you're going to definitely be recognizing this format um, so a lot of things that we love a lot about painterly days we incorporated into this book here's the back flap uh, with the suggested materials a lot more information this time around on suggested materials and again you can use that back flap to protect pages that you're working on and slide it in there love that Okay, so let's flip through. Love that spine, isn't that beautiful? That's a yellow linen, so pretty. We'll get right into the artwork. We had knockout roses and hollyhocks. Going back to the knockout rose page, I wanna show you how easy it is to tear out love that but it won't come out just from flipping the pages which is very important we have critters and yuccas we have anemones and ranunculus we have a butterfly of blooms one of my favorites ladies mantle and blueberries beautiful wreath there um, we have roses and birds just beautiful garden roses cone flowers uh, much requested landscape summer cottage again still a lot of flowers uh, we have um, let's see our blooming succulents, fuchsia variety, and guys, a lot of these are based on traditional botanical layouts. So if you've ever looked at um, old vintage botanical prints, you're gonna notice different layouts. As you'll see here, I'm showing you that these pages, once they're wet and then dry again, they're not going to be rippled, they're gonna dry flat, and the paint will not bleed through to the back. Daylily bulbs, hosta, we have prickly pear next with beautiful little birds on them. Next is a hydrangea. Fruit and vegetable composition. You'll notice that a lot more white space than in painterly days. Tomatoes and peppers here. Hibiscus wreath. Sunflowers. Next is a snapdragon wreath. A lot less repeat patterns as well, which is what you asked for. These are desert wildflowers. And then we have peonies and fuchsia, mushrooms, dogwood, and uh, obscure one, penstamen, which is just a beautiful little blue flower. We love it so much. So one thing you may have noticed is that the pages are not double-sided anymore. Um, it was kind of a toss-up. Some people loved it, some people didn't. So um, we went with non-double-sided, And but guys, remember that color will not bleed through. So you can practice your brush strokes and your mark making and all of the tutorials that I talk about in the front flaps, you can practice that on the back of the sheets. So I am going to do a demo today. I'm going to, of course, use my favorite Royal and Lang Nickel Dagger Brush. And uh, today I am working with a Holbein watercolor palette. And let's get started. I'm gonna start with just a wet brush and do my kind of classic technique where I just wet areas on the page with very juicy color using kind of a push and pull, a light, light touch on the brush bringing then in a clean brush with water on it to kind of soften the color that I just laid down. And then also, one of my classic te techniques is, again, using a clean brush and scooping up some of the color with that brush. Always have your paper towel handy and just, I'm scooping color here, because I want just a little bit of that bright, bright, bright pink there on the edge. Just moving along. This paper, guys, if you've used it before, you know what a powerhouse it is. I've said it again and again. Some of the reviews on Amazon, people have been a little frustrated with this paper. But one thing I will say, this paper will work hard for you as long as you don't press hard on it. 
Um, just something to remember, just a really light touch on the paper, lots of water. If you see pilling happening as you're painting, you're pressing way too hard and or you're not using enough water. So I'm just continuing along, adding really strong color and pressing light and a little bit harder on my brush as I apply that color to the outer edge of the petal. And then taking clean water on a wet brush and floating that in right next to that strong color I added and dabbing on my paper towel in between. See there, I just used my finger. When you just lay down color on this paper, you can kind of scoop up the color with your finger a little bit. It's just a really simple little trick. Um, and it removes little mistakes really easily. And I'm just working around the edges with the tip of the dagger brush. You'll notice I've been using the tip and also the side. Here I'm using the edge, the side of the brush and the bristles, getting some clean water in there and using the tip. And notice how much I dab. If you need to rewind, rewind. Just notice how much I dab onto that paper towel. My technique of watercolor painting is very much push and pull. You've probably heard me say it before. Push and pull, wet and dry, dabbing and not dabbing, blotting and not, and not blotting your color, um, applying heavy color and then scooping it away with a clean wet brush. So it's a lot of back and forth. Just continuing on here, I am using an Opera Rose. Holbein has a color, I think they just call it Opera. Uh, very pretty. Again, it's not light fast, I've mentioned this before, it is a fugitive color. So if you let it sit in the sunlight for uh, months and months or longer, it will fade. Um, so protect that color. If you are using these pages, reproducing them, using them to wrap gifts or make cards, you're gonna be fine. Scooping up the color again with a clean wet brush and then just moving on to the next petal. I love this technique of adding really strong color along the outer edge of a petal and then fading it out. You, you create essentially instant depth in your painting. Now I've gone in with a semi-dirty brush with a little pink on it and just kind of filled in some of the petals around the others that I've already been working on little peach here. One of the colors in the whole buying set is just this beautiful creamy pinky peach color and I'm going to go ahead and fill in some other areas. One thing I love to mention is that you don't have to paint one flower on your page the same way the entire way through. You'll notice I started with one technique and now I've gone into bringing in a second technique where I'm washing color all over a grouping of petals. And now I'm kind of creating almost this outline that I will very soon then soften. So don't feel like you have to use the same technique throughout the entire flower. In fact, if you do, you may end up feeling like your flower is a little, ah, uh, a little ho-hum. It's missing something, a little flat. So vary your techniques, vary the way that you lay down the color vary the way vary the colors that you use yes it's a pink peony but guys it's not just one shade of pink it's peachy pink and corally pink and bright 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 pink and bubblegum pink and so switch it up okay moving along here I'm just adding last few touches the great thing about the way that the illustrations are done in the book is that if you get bored and I always say this, you need to keep painting in a way that keeps you excited. So if you're painting petals and painting petals and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm bored of this. Move on, fill in the petals that you have. Don't leave one petal like half filled in. Fill, finish filling in your petals and leave it be. Go start working on leaves or the center of the flower, whatever it may be. Now here, I'm starting to add some really strong alizarin crimson or a cadmium red you may have into in towards the center of the flower for some depth adding some shading um and now i'm over it i want to go on to leaves so i'm using the broad edge of that dagger brush and i'm filling those leaves with a very kind of like 60 40 pigment to water combo very light very washy just adding that in there just to feel good about what i'm working on adding that green in instantly makes me feel like 
what I'm working on is making sense. It instantly looks more natural to see those green leaves being painted in, and it makes me feel good about the painting that I'm working on. So again, you wanna keep yourself feeling good throughout your painting experience. So don't tie yourself to the thought process, I have to finish all the flowers, and then I have to do all the leaves, and then I have to do all, and so on and so on. Paint what makes you feel good. Paint the areas that get you excited and go back to the others when you're through. I'm adding some intense um, areas here with a, uh, a yellow, kind of a dark Naples, um, some green gold um, from the Holbein palette. I'm adding just some more intense areas while those leaves are still wet. I love these bleeding hearts. I decided early on, even before I started painting here today, that I was going to make them a pretty strong cadmium red. I am essentially outlining parts of the, the heart shaped petals. And now I'm going to go in with clean water next to those areas and let the color bleed out into the water from my brush. And that again creates instant highlights uh, without losing that really beautiful intense red color. So pretty. Um, if you get little puddles of either color or water that you feel are too much, use a clean, dry brush and just scoop up the excess color with the broad edge of your dagger brush. And guys, if you're using a round brush, which a lot of you might be, a number two, maybe a number four, um, you can also use the broad edge of a round brush. You don't have to just use the tip. So don't worry if you can't get your hands on this dagger brush that I talk about all the time. Um, use your round brushes, just think about using different edges of your round brush, tip and broad edge. Just continuing on here, adding in some really, really intense areas. Again, remember, keep that soft touch on your brush. You'll notice I don't really scrub my color into the page and I, I've had this question a lot. Why does my painting look more dull? Why don't my colors look as dynamic as yours? Why don't I see the highs and lows, meaning the bright areas and the contrasted areas, lights and darks? A lot of the time it's because you're scrubbing your color on and usually it's in an effort to make something look super, super smooth. Um, see that gradient from light to dark being perfectly smooth without any water droplets, without any hard edges. And that is certainly a respectable challenge, but what ends up happening is people overwork their paper, they muddy up their color um, in an effort to get that really smooth effect. I am much more instinctive. I lay down color, I let it just do its thing with the water. Um, I, I have learned to love water marks and droplets. Um, as you continue in your painting journey and get more proficient and you will gain more control over your color as it mixes with the water. But be okay with some of those imperfect moments because that, in my opinion, is what is so magical about watercolor. Um, and you'll also, in the same, at the same time, you won't be muddying up your page, seeing pilling on the page and overworking your page. I've gone in here, this is a brand new brush of mine, by the way, it's uh, by the Nimble Claw on uh, Instagram. I will definitely list the source um, in the information section of this post. Um, it's just a sweet little round brush. It's about a number two. And I'm adding in some really, really dark areas in the center of the flower with just the tip of this brush, barely any pressure. I'm using like an indigo color um, just to add some depth. I, I really love that effect. You have to check out these brushes. They're just incredible, completely hand carved. Going back in, adding some really, really bright moments of opera rose, and then on to the leaves again. Right here, I'm using more of a cobalt turquoise in the leaves. I really like to mix up my greens. I, I do have my favorites. The, the turquoise family are definitely a favorite of mine. Uh, I've really been in love with kind of the green golds lately. The different brands of watercolor have different names for them. Um, but I do like to mix things up. So in the same way that you're not going to paint each flower petal the same exact way with the same exact color, 
Uh, I would suggest not painting using the same exact green uh, throughout all your leaves. I mean, think about the way that shadows hit and light hits things. It's gonna change the way that those colors look. Just gonna zoom in closer here. I really want you to see some of the detail that I had worked in. And notice that green, those little green leaves. I did not spend too much time on those. And just by letting the water and the pigment do its thing, they have highs and lows, lights and darks. Beautiful. So much fun. All right, I'm adding in this section just water onto the leaf. This is another great technique. And dropping in little dabs of a really muddy green that I had on my palette and blending it out with clean water on a sopping, sopping wet brush, blending it out with clean water on a sopping wet brush, adding in a stronger green and letting it all just flow together. Now notice there, a little bit of the color went outside the lines and I don't wanna fuss with trying to remove it so I'm adding in some extra areas that just look like extra leaves behind the main leaf that is illustrated there. Dry brush, look at that. I am using the broad edge of that round brush. I mentioned that earlier. If you don't have a dagger, you can still use the broad edge of your round brush to scoop up color, to add color. And here I just really wanna get a high area, a very light area on top of the leaf. I'm gonna add in some of that green, green gold right where the leaf meets the flower. And very, very light pressure as I'm swishing around the the water that I've added to the page. Again, I'm scooping up. You see that push and pull. I'm adding color, I'm taking it away. I'm adding color, I'm taking it away. I'm putting color here and then I'm moving it to another area with just clean water on my brush. So think about the different ways that you can move color around on the page. And you'll notice here, I've been working this area quite a bit. I want you to notice there is no pilling happening. I've laid down at least four four or five different colors. I've scrubbed around, I've pulled color away, um, I'm pulling it away again. Um, I'm really working this leaf. Um, and you'll notice there's no pilling happening. You're not seeing any fibers pop up from the paper. Uh, again, some of the concerns on Amazon, the reviews, and I really always love to address them, is that people were super frustrated with the paper saying it pilled almost the minute that you put color on it. Again, you're not using enough water, you're not using enough, um, you're using too much pressure. Uh, what that probably means is that you're not using enough water on your page and way too much pressure. Notice that. Look at no pilling at all guys. Tons of work on that leaf. Back and forth. Push and pull. Scrubbing out color. Adding in color. Scrubbing it out again. So the amount of pressure is just super super important. Um, uh, the amount of pressure is super important in these books and honestly super important with any watercolor paper you use. You can only push it so far. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching.